Good afternoon girls and a very happy May Day. I hope you loved that audio-visual Twitter storm performed by the birds of South Africa as much as I did. That amazing piece was created by Shake Up Music, a recomposition of Mozart's Magic Flute's Papageno Papageno duet into a real live birdsong aria. The first day of the month of May is known as May Day. The day was originally a traditional summer holiday in many European pagan cultures, as February the 1st used to mark the first day of spring, therefore May the 1st celebrated the first day of summer, and so the summer solstice on June the 25th was midsummer. May Day has been celebrated in England for over 2,000 years. The Romans celebrated the festival of Flora, goddess of fruit and flowers, which marked the beginning of summer, fertility of the soil, livestock and the people. May Day in Ireland has been celebrated since pagan times as the Feast of Beltane, when bonfires were lit to mark the coming of summer and to banish long nights of winter. When Europe became Christianised, May Day changed into a popular secular celebration and incorporated dancing around the Maypole, crowning the Queen of May and Morris dancing. Village fates and community gatherings often took place at this time, and as seeding had usually been completed by the state, it was a convenient time to give farm day labourers a day off. The giving of May baskets, small baskets of sweets or flowers, which were usually left anonymously on neighbours' doorsteps, was also a traditional part of May Day. But this lovely tradition has now faded in popularity since the late 20th century. I wonder whether you may like to think about an elderly neighbour or a vulnerable person this May Day and create a May basket for them. May Day is also celebrated around the globe, with each country having different reasons for and ways of celebrating the first day in the month of May. In France, King Charles IX of France received a lily of the valley as a lucky charm in 1561 and decided to offer a lily of the valley each year on the same day, 1st of May, to the ladies of the court. And at the beginning of the 20th century, it became therefore a custom to give a sprig of lily in the valley, a symbol of springtime, on May the 1st. I have reminded Pierre to give a sprig to his mum, with whom he is staying in France at the moment, to support her during coronavirus lockdown. In Finland, Walpurgis Night is the celebration of May Day and is one of the four biggest Finnish holidays, along with Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve and Midsummer. In Italy, May Day is called Calendi Maggio or Cantar Maggio, where a seasonal feast is traditionally held in order to celebrate the arrival of spring, the return to life and rebirth. So here, another idea for you all. Why not create a feast for your family this evening or over the weekend? Or if that sounds like too much, then why not bake a celebratory cake? Dylan has turned into an excellent baker and has produced flapjacks, chocolate brownies and banana cake recently. Please do send in any images of your feasts and baking to our marketing department for widest sharing and celebration. The Catholic Christian Church has traditionally celebrated May as the month of the Virgin Mary. And as a part of a 500 year old tradition in Oxford on May morning, the choir of Magdalen College ascends its 144 foot bell tower and serenades the city and the crowds below with a 17th century hymn, the hymn Eucharisticus. Once the bells have rung out the hour at six o'clock in the morning. The choir then performs three madrigals before the bell ringers begin a celebratory chime. I vividly recall being part of that May Day crowd during my undergraduate years at Oxford. To help us celebrate this May morning, albeit without a communal gathering, I have a second piece of music to share with you all. One of the most famous oratorios, the Alleluia Chorus from Handel's Messiah, had a UK premiere at the Royal Opera House in 1743. Listen now to joy, the joyful sound of the Royal Opera House's chorus and orchestra as they perform a very special lockdown rendition. <laughs>
the star jumps, motorbikes and chickens. I would like, now like to move us on from Western musical celebration to an Eastern one. The Orthodox Church, which includes the Russians, Greeks, Armenians, Coptics and Ethiopians amongst them, celebrated Easter just a fortnight ago. And this gives me the chance to share this most moving rendition of Psalm 53 with you. Sung in Aramaic, the common language of Judea in the first century AD, which it is generally agreed by historians, was the language that Jesus and his disciples primarily spoke. With thanks to my sister Vicky, who forwarded this on from a scholar of Byzantine art who lives in Tbilisi and who writes, the video was taken in 2015 during the visit of Pope Francis to Georgia. Father Seraphim is from the village of Kanda in Georgia, where there is an ancient Syrian community. He is conducting his traditional liturgy in the Svetish Koveli Cathedral, where, according to legend, the tunic of Christ is buried. You will notice that they are not using microphones or any other type of sound enhancement, just the natural acoustics of the church.
I found the small girl and her powerful voice quite mesmerising and found an incredible sense of inner peace and spirituality when I listened to the music. I hope you have also. And so to conclude, as our reflection, I offer you part of the poem May Magnificat by the great English poet, mystic and Catholic priest, Gerard Manley Hopkins, which I hope will help you all to reflect on our theme of spring celebration, the natural world and our place in it. Flesh and fleece, fur and feather, grass and green world all together. Star-eyed, strawberry-breasted, throstle above her nested. Cluster of bugle blue eggs thin, forms and warms the life within. And bird and blossom swell in sod or sheath or shell. All things rising, all things sizing, Mary sees sympathising with that world of good nature's motherhood. Their magnifying of each, each kind with delight calls to mind how she did in her stored magnify the Lord. Well, but there was more than this, spring's universal bliss much had much to say to offering Mary May. Thank you so much for listening.